This case is a landmark English contract law, restitution and UK company case law. It concerns restitution for misrepresentation and how the impossibility of counter restitution may be a bar to restitution. It is also an important il- illustration of how promoters of a company stand in a fiduciary relationship to subscribers. Hello everyone, my name is Shandini Joslin and today I'll be introducing to you on the facts of the case. Frederick Amel de Langer, or better known as Erlanger, was a French banker who bought the lease of the Anguillan island of Sombrero Phosphate Mining for £55,000 sterling. Erlanger then established New Erlanger Phosphate Company before selling Sombrero's lease to Phosphate for £110,000 sterling through a nominee. The company had five directors in total. Let us see each one of them. One of Phosphate directors was the Lord Mayor of London, who was independent of Erlanger's initial group of founders. Another two directors were from abroad and the last two directors were puppet directors of Erlanger. Due to Erlanger's strong control over Phosphate, the company was essentially an extension of Erlanger. Phosphate ratified the sale of the lease. Many people invested in Phosphate due to Erlanger's skills at promotion. Eventually, the investors realized that Erlanger had sold the lease to Phosphate for double the price he had bought it for, and Phosphate sued Erlanger for recession due to non-disclosure and an account of profits. My name is Wan Rosna and I'm talking about issue of the case. The issue in this case is, was Erlanger liable for recession due to non-disclosure to his conflict of interest which subjected to an account of profits? As this case shows, is Erlanger liable to Phosphate knowing that he sold the lease to Phosphate for double the price he had bought it, concludes to him having another secret account of profit. To explain, recession is bad due to future calamities in banking, trade, manufacturing as well as food prices. In this case, can the company still seek remedies and recover? The House of Lords unanimously held that promoters of a company stand in a fiduciary relationship to investors meaning they have a duty of disclosure further they held by majority that the contract could be rescinded and that recession was not barred by latches. Lord Blackburn decided that delay did not bar recession as a general condition to a recession that must be a restitute in integrum. There was a question over this since postpaid had been mined and it was not so easy to put the postpaid back. In this case, however, adequate compensation could be paid, so there was no impossibility in counter restitution. As we are done looking through this case, Erlanger was a promoter for phosphate, hence the relationship labels a fiduciary relationship which involves trust between a trustee and a beneficiary. Moving on, the defendant purchased a lease on mine and then somewhat to control which includes other directors. He then sold shares in the company to the investors which the price that the defendant set, not the price at which he purchased. Soon, the shareholders wanted to get rid of the directors and replace them with a new one. They sued the defendant to revoke the sale of the island in order to get the money back. A promoter who breaches any duty to the company by failing to disclose to the company conflicting interests will be liable. The company is able to seek remedies such as rescission of contract and recovery of profits. Based on the principle of Lord Pazanse in fiduciary relationships such as trustee truster, the court will grant relief from unfair advantage and the party accused of being in the position of unfair advantage has the burden on him to show that he is not. Let's see the position of promoter based on Alanger versus Sombero Company.
the position of promoters vis-a-vis the company which they are promoting is not that of trustees to assess to EK Trust, but they are in a fiduciary position toward the company. It is their duty to nominate independent directors of the company who are capable of acting impartially in the affairs of the company's interests and will be competent and impartial judges whether or not the purchase ought to be made. Furthermore, they must disclose to the company all the material facts relating to the transaction. Although this is not misrepresentation case but a non-disclosure case, the principles laid down for rescission apply generally. In conclusion, a promoter stands in fiduciary capacity to company because he owes certain duties to the company. He is not allowed to make secret profits. From the case of Erlanger against New Sombrero Phosphate, let us look at the remedies available for breach. It happens when a promoter fails to make a full and proper disclosure of a profit made by him out of the promotion. The first remedy is rescission of contract, where promoter has sold his own property to the company without disclosing this, the company can resign the contract and recover the purchase price. The second remedy is recover of secret profit. It is not necessary that they need an imputation of evil purpose or conscious fraud. The third remedy is damages for breach of fiduciary duty. A company may also have a remedy in damages against its promoters for breach of their fiduciary duties.